Oh hey there, today we're making some classic breakfasts into protein-rich vegan recipes. When Robin was first transitioning into veganism, he was worrying about whether or not he was getting enough protein. Some of you might share that sentiment. So I thought before we delve into today's video, let me just say that for most of us who are enjoying a variety of different plant-based foods, it's actually pretty easy to get our protein requirements for the day. So you don't need to be tracking your macros or taking anything like protein powders necessarily. With that said, I know some people still really enjoy having some protein-rich recipes in their arsenal, and that's what today's video is about. So we're gonna be sharing three protein-rich breakfast recipes in the video, but if you do wanna delve deeper and you want to learn more about what protein is and what your requirements are, we have an uncomplicated article that we've written. It links off to a whole bunch of evidence-based research in case you want to learn more. Plus there's a free downloadable PDF with a whole list of high protein ingredients that you can enjoy every day if you'd like to. So I'm going to link that for you below, but for now let's delve into these recipes. You know it's going to be a good day if it starts with pancakes and these aren't just ordinary pancakes because they're loaded with protein. So the high protein ingredient in this recipe is silken tofu, which is a very soft, almost jello-like tofu. And once it's been blended, it's gonna give the most smooth and silky consistency. So we're gonna add a 300 gram block of this to a blender, along with one and a half cups of pea milk, or you could use soy milk if you prefer. Pea milk and soy milk offer more protein per cup than any other plant-based milk, as much as six to 10 times more, for example, than almond or oat or rice milk. Then we're gonna add in two tablespoons of maple syrup, two teaspoons each of vanilla extract and fresh lemon juice, or you could use vinegar. And then we're just gonna blend this all up until it's smooth. And to a large bowl, we're gonna add three and a half cups of spelt flour. Spelt flour has more protein and more fiber than regular all-purpose flour, which is great. Then we're gonna be adding in two teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon each of baking soda and ground cinnamon, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna mix everything together. Once we're done, we can create a little well in the center of it. We're gonna pour our liquid mixture into the well. Then we're gonna mix this again until it's just combined, but be careful not to overmix. If you find that the mixture is too thick, you can always add a small splash of plant milk to thin it out a bit. Then we're gonna heat up a non-stick crepe pan with just a little bit of oil. We're gonna scoop up about a quarter of a cup of the batter and then add it to the pan. Using the back of a spoon, we're gonna spread it out into a thin, round, pancake-like shape. Just keep in mind these pancakes do rise quite a bit. And then we're gonna cook them for a couple of minutes on each side. So once the bottom is lightly golden, we can flip it to cook on the other side. Once the pancakes have been stacked high, we're gonna to top ours with some soy-based Greek yogurt, which is higher in protein than just like the regular coconut yogurt, for example, that we often use. We're also gonna add a sprinkle of roasted nuts and pumpkin seeds, which are sources of protein as well. And finally, we're gonna decorate them with some fresh fruits. And of course, you can drizzle on some maple syrup if you'd like. I am Canadian after all, so I'm not skipping on the maple syrup. These pancakes are the perfect weekend breakfast to make and enjoy on the spot, but you can also meal prep this recipe. So you can make it ahead of time, store it in the fridge or freezer, and just reheat it whenever you're ready to enjoy it. So a lot of us enjoy avocado toast for breakfast, right? But with this recipe, we're gonna add a quick and super delicious bean spread to it that's gonna level up its protein content. So the protein superstar in this recipe are cannellini beans, but all beans are awesome protein sources. We're just gonna be using these ones because they have a very subtle flavor, and so they take on the flavors of all the other things we're gonna be adding in. So we're gonna add one and a half cups of these beans to a small food processor, along with one and a half tablespoons of chipotle adobo sauce, a tablespoon of nutritional yeast, a teaspoon of maple syrup, and half of a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and just a little bit of black pepper. Then we're gonna just blend this up until it's nice and smooth and creamy. And you can always stop to scrape down the sides if you need to. Now you can toast your bread however you normally would, but my favorite way lately is actually just to heat it up on the stove with just a touch of oil. And then once it's kind of golden on both sides, it's already done. I love the taste and the crunch of toasting it this way. Some whole wheat breads and sprouted breads can offer a considerable amount of protein per slice, and that can really add up if you're having a few slices for your meal. Um, so next time you're at the grocery store, if you want, you can always check the labels of the different kinds of breads and see which one offers more protein per slice. To the now empty pan, we're gonna add just a little bit of oil along with a cup of corn, and then we're gonna cook it, stirring throughout for just a few minutes so that the corn becomes lightly golden brown. 
Now you're already ready to assemble your toast. So you can layer on some chipotle bean spread, super thick. We're gonna add some sliced creamy avocado on top of that, and we can sprinkle on the corn. And then finally, some optional garnishes are some sliced green onions and some sesame seeds and some chili flakes. I can't even begin to explain how much more enjoyable this is than just plain avocado toast, which is saying a lot because avocado toast is already awesome. And you can also enjoy it for lunch or dinner. You don't have to necessarily only have it for breakfast, but I definitely recommend trying it out, especially because it takes just a few minutes to whip up. Quiche is usually a high protein breakfast that's made with eggs, but we're gonna veganize it by making this incredible leek and spinach tofu quiche. We'll first prepare two weeks by cutting off both the root and the overly fibrous green top. These green tops you can definitely save for a homemade vegetable stock. They make a great addition to them. Then we're gonna cut the leeks in half lengthwise. We're gonna wash in between the layers to make sure we remove any sand that might be in there. And then we're gonna thinly slice the leeks. We're also gonna chop up an onion and we'll mince three cloves of garlic. Then to a large pan on high heat, we're gonna add some oil and when it's hot, we're gonna add the leeks, onion and garlic to it, along with half of a teaspoon of salt just to help the veggies sweat. We're then gonna cook this for about seven minutes. So while that's cooking away, we're gonna coarsely chop five cups of spinach. This looks like an absurd amount of spinach. I almost feel like Popeye slicing into all of it. But spinach is a relatively good protein source, especially when you eat this much of it, but it also reduces a lot in volume once it's cooked, so you'll hardly even notice. Then when the leeks have softened and it looks like there's no more moisture left in the pan, we're gonna add all of the spinach. We're also gonna add in a teaspoon of dried thyme and a teaspoon of dried parsley and half of a teaspoon of black pepper and an optional half of a crushed vegetable bouillon cube. We can then cook this for about two to three minutes. So just a heads up, if the mixture is too wet, the inside of the tart can actually become soggy. So what we wanna do is cook off as much moisture that's in the pan as possible. So like this, for example, is still too wet. See how you can see these like these lines of water and moisture. So I'm gonna just cook this off, and once it's completely cooked off, then I'm gonna turn off the heat. Now we can prepare our tart pan. We're first gonna grease it up with a little bit of oil, and then we're gonna lay some puff pastry dough on top of it. Once it's been pressed down along the bottom and up along the sides, we're gonna use a fork to poke holes in the bottom of the dough, and then we're gonna sprinkle a tablespoon of breadcrumbs along the base. This is to help soak up any liquid that might seep out while the tart is baking. So for this recipe, we're gonna be using 650 grams of extra firm tofu, and this is the main protein source for this recipe, but we wanna make sure that it's drained and pressed well. If the tofu is too wet, again, it's gonna result in a quiche that's just a bit too soggy on the inside. You don't need like a fancy tofu press if you don't have one, just squeeze it really hard with your hands, and don't worry if it crumbles either, it's gonna get blended anyway. We'll add the strained tofu to a food processor, along with three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice and a quarter of a cup of nutritional yeast flakes. Just a heads up, the nutritional yeast that we're using is the flaked kind, which is a bit more light and airy than the powdered nutritional yeast. So just keep that in mind. If you're using the powdered kind, I'd maybe consider adding a little bit less. And fun fact, nutritional yeast is actually a pretty good source of protein. It's not a whole lot, but you're gonna see that all these little bits, they actually tend to add up really quickly in contributing to our overall protein intake. Then we're gonna add a tablespoon of cornstarch, a teaspoon each of golden Dijon mustard and golden turmeric for its beautiful color, and finally, half of a teaspoon of Kalanamax salt. Kalanamax salt is my favorite discovery of last year. It's also known as black salt, and it's often used in South Asian cuisine, so you might be able to find it at your local Asian supermarket, but it has this very characteristic egg-like smell and flavor, and that comes from the sulfur compounds that are just naturally in it, so it works perfectly in a vegan quiche recipe like this one. Now we can pop on the lid and blend this up until it's completely smooth. Whenever you're ready, we can transfer this tofu mixture into the pan that has the spinach, and then we're just gonna mix this all together. Once you're done with that, we can then transfer this mixture to the prepared tart pan. Once we've spread everything out as evenly as we can, we can then place some cut cherry tomatoes cut side up on top of the tart. It just makes it look so cute, but it also gives it a lovely flavor. Finally, we can roll over any excess pastry dough around the rim to create a crust, and then we're gonna bake this tart on the center rack of a preheated oven at 390 Fahrenheit or 200 Celsius for about 35 to 40 minutes, or until the crust is slightly golden and the top is firm to the touch. Now this is really important. You wanna let the quiche cool off for at least 10 minutes before you slice into it. This is gonna give it some time just to firm up so that you cut into it more cleanly. This tart makes roughly four servings, so you can enjoy it with your whole family or you can pack it up. And you can even enjoy it for lunch or dinner if you'd like. And if you can handle some spice in the morning, I actually really like to enjoy this with some hot sauce. 
And now you have three brand new high protein breakfast recipes to add to your arsenal. The full breakdown to the recipes are in the description box and that's also where you're gonna get your free PDF. Thanks so much for hanging with us today. Really appreciate it. Pickup Limes signing off and we'll see you in the next video. Oh. Alex, look at me. Look at me. How am I gonna film? Oh my gosh. Okay, how's my makeup? <laughs> totally missing it went on my arm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Why aren't you working? Hold on. Again? <laughs> Actually often used in... One more. And, and used in just...